Yeah, how, how long have you known for now that you're going to be on the Contender Series? So I've known a few weeks now, um, but now the cat's out the bag. I don't know where, who found it out, but I'm kind of glad the cat's out the bag. So people know now. Yeah, it's just perfect time competition-wise. I actually wish it was a bit sooner than August because I'm flying now. Way to head of schedule, I'm really fit now. I wish it was closer, but I've just got to be patient. What do you mean competition, like competition-wise? You know, I, everyone likes to have a good schedule. I was, like, I was watching... You know, Chuck Liddell versus Barbalo at like UFC 40 earlier, and how he took that fight to keep the schedule right. And this is just perfect with the schedule. You know, everyone's three fights a year. I want to start to get more fights a year. You know, it's a perfect amount of time. You know, just focus on building the gym because it's building up massively now. It's getting rammed, every class is getting rammed. We have to split it into three classes a night, and each class is busy. And spent our time building the gym. And now it's just rolling on forward, rolling on forward to August 15th, which is just under 10 weeks. Yeah. Obviously, being in the UFC, it's something you, am I right in saying you, you, you work your, your entire life for it as a fighter? Yeah. What, what's that feeling like when you're obviously not there yet, but they're you know, getting on a contender series? What's that feeling like? I, I don't have an inkling of that feeling in the slightest, and I'm not thinking about it until I've got Kareem Abdul El Salwadi your pizza and got Dana or Manjaro's palm yeah. Those are the two things I have to do first. I'm not thinking like, oh, I've made it. Oh, yeah, people give me messages. Got to get the job done. Yeah. Well, yeah, like that being said, all your previous fights, you always seem so chill beforehand. Do you feel any more pressure now because of it, because of this one? Yeah, there's more to organise. You know, there's more to organise to get to America and there's more paperwork and I am allergic to paperwork. But I <laughs> sort out the best, best possible ability. Pressure-wise, it doesn't change. It's it's a body in a cage. It's all the same. That's what I spend all day, every day, practicing to do. Yeah. You said you're off to Vegas next week. What, what are you doing there? A bit of media. There'll be a bit of media. Um, I don't know what that entails. Uh, flexing in front of cameras, I'm guessing, and doing the promos. To be honest, I don't know. And it seems like a long way to go for a bit of media, but I'm quite glad of it because it's going to be like a practice run. I've not travelled that far in ages. I've never travelled to Vegas before. So it's going to be like a practice run of everything. Do you think you'll get any training in uh, whilst you're out there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure where yet. Everything's getting organised on the fly and see how it fits around the media schedule. But I'm, I'm just excited for the trip. I'm not excited to spend 10 hours on a plane though, but I'll bring I'll bring the Book of Five Rings by me and Martin Musashi. Even though I've read it a bazillion times, I'll just uh, reread over it. Reread over certain lines. <laughs> yeah. As, um, see, I think, am I right in saying all your previous fight camps you've always done here at MFA? Is there going to be anything different about this one? You know, I might get sparring partners here, but here and there, but this is perfect. MFA is what's brought me from day one training under Abdul Mohammed to now Cage Warriors champion knocking on the door of the UFC training under Abdul Mohammed. And if I'm going to fight Abdul Kareem El Salwadi, he boxes, he wrestles, he's called Abdul. Well, I've had a much better version of that training since day one with Abdul Mohammed. <laughs> sound like a... Uh, have you looked at much of him already? You sound like you already maybe watched a few of his fights. Yeah, I've watched a few of his fights, you know. He started to wrestle a bit more in his recent fights. You know, he took he took a little skid, which is the way the game is. He took that spinning elbow, he took a knee. Um, he got stopped a few times in a row and then he brought his wrestling back into it. It's, it's interesting to see. I want to see how much he's going to try and wrestle on Contender Series. Because Contender Series, people are known for throwing hands, trying to go on for that impressive knockout. And I want to see how his approach is going to be. Try to you know, try and impress Dana, maybe. Wrestling's not always, maybe. Is that what you're sort of getting at? See, I don't have to worry about impressing Dana. Watch my last eight fights. It's just finishes, 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 wins. Me and Harry know no other way than to just work at a crazy pace. That's our natural. So we don't need to force anything above that. Finish will come. The finish will come, we'll present the finish. Uh, you know, watch me and Harry sparring, you'd swear we're button mashing because <laughs> it's that fast pace. But So we don't need to force it any more than that. Yeah. I've just spent a fair bit of time with you the last couple of years. I don't think I've seen you this, this excited in a while. Everything's, for a, for a fight. everything's coming up very Millhouse. Opportunities coming at the perfect time, body's feeling great, getting those Manjaro's Parmos in every weekend, the gym is busiest it's ever been. 
Yeah, there's so much potential coming through. Everything's just brilliant. George, I think he's too good for that series. He should have gone and you would see it straight away. He's going to smash the guy up. Another liver shot? Could be liver shot, you know, we don't, we don't know. He doesn't plan to liver shot anything, you know. We train hard for it and he's prepared for it, he's ready. Then anything goes, probably body shot, could be submission, could be knockout, anything, yeah. What, in your opinion, makes George as, so good, as, yeah, as good as he is? Because George is, he trains hard. I know he's good. Train twice a day. And he's, you know, he's been doing it for a long time and he's the champion in, in, in Europe. Cage Warriors. You know, it's not easy to become a champion and defend his title four times. I think he's, he, he deserves more. You know, it's a, it's a true fight for, for both men. They're going in there, there's, there's a lot of pressure on these men, you know. They're trying to impress in front of the boss and a big company. But you know, if I had to put my money on it, George in one. One round. Cold. It's alright, Yeah, it was good. Though. I've been was practicing, man. Good, the good riffing as well. You know. Good what? Good just like riffing and. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. You know, just like making up stuff. <laughs> riffing? <laughs> 12 years ago, I, I, you know, like, compared to 12 years ago, I'm, I'm faster, I'm stronger, I'm younger. Because <laughs> of course I want to outlive my kids. That's how Sean Strickland fights. He's actually alright though. He's got an alright strip, he's like, his straight punches are alright, but he's like, he is the test of... Do you remember how, like, Nate Diaz and Jeremy Stevens were, like, the game... Oh, wait, man, Nate Diaz is better than him. Yeah, but, oh, like, if, if you just fight Strickland, like how you normally fight, you get beat because he'll just tackle you with straight punches. But the second you actually fight with a game plan, you beat him. I'll beat him out game plan. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, you'd I fucking would. go like this, and you'd be like... No, I wouldn't, mate. I just... Well, like, if I'm you start sidestepping... Don't with me, calf kick. You call him Strickland, now. Or if you just fucking you see him at that gym, if, if you're just a big horrible Brazilian bastard who just goes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>